Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Monday Night Live grooming session. Um, I'm Melanie Newman. And I'm Janelle Austin. And this is the amazing Dash of the Bichon. Of course, it's Dash. Look at him. And um, it was his birthday on Saturday. It was. Yeah. How old did he turn? He's eight. Oh, my God. It's came know. so quick. I remember when he was a little baby. I know. I know how naughty he was. <laughs> he was so naughty. But, um, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's getting on. He's eight now. Yeah, That's yeah. That's why he likes to sleep most of the, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So tonight's grooming session, we are going to talk about grooming your dog in between professional grooms. Mm-hmm. So keeping their coat really yeah. nice, brushed out. So we Minimal get, knots and tangles. Yeah, so you can get the longer trims if, if you like and that will be, you know, yeah. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't brushed Dash for about two weeks mm-hmm. in preparation for this evening. Exactly. <laughs> so he might have a few knots and tangles and um, a few little bits of grass yeah. sticks <laughs> he does like to, he's busy isn't he he's like, very busy he digs yeah he like runs through all the bath doesn't yeah he? It's caught in his coat. yeah he's a little boy so we, we will go through all those type of things so we will get started yeah so the first thing was the first thing that we need to do now so i always tell people they need to be prepared so mm-hmm. When you decide that you're going to brush your dog, like the nightly brush or the weekly brush, that it's not a matter of just popping your dog on the couch and then quickly brushing. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what sort of happens. And then the dog is like a cat trying to get away. I don't want to do this. I want to play with my toys on the floor. Yeah. Or I want to have a sleep on the couch. Mm -hmm. So I always say to people, they need to prepare for that moment. And this also communicates to the dog that, it's happening. That's the grooming, it's the grooming time, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, that is happening. So um, that's what I always recommend. So prepare. So have everything set up. So a nice level table. So not on a washing machine where there's a little bit of a, a, slope. a slope. Because if you've got a bit of a nervous Nelly, it can kind of mm-hmm. put them really off balance and yeah. a bit more anxious. Yeah. Um, I always say use a non-slip mat. So you can get these grooming mats. These are from DGS. Mm-hmm. Uh, are they called? Are they called a paw mat? And they're pretty thick. Uh, or you can use a yoga mat. Yeah, sometimes I, the, I use yeah. yoga mats. Yeah, sometimes they might be a little bit easier to store. To store, yeah. <laughs> these are quite thick, so they don't roll up as well, do they? They don't. So these are more of professional level. Mm-hmm. But um, yoga mats are great. You just cut them to the size that you need and they're really non-slip. And I feel like it does help with fatigue. Yeah. So yeah. for your elderly dogs, That's your right. puppies, yeah. things like that, it really helps. Just like us, a little fatigue mat, it goes a long way. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so it also helps with your dog's safety as well. So really making sure your dog feels nice and secure every time you groom your dog. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so you want to make sure it's not wobbly either. So not wobbly sure that's table. very sturdy. <laughs> nice and stable. This is pretty stable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good, isn't it? so if you also don't have anyone to help you, you can always purchase a grooming table. I've mm-hmm. got a few clients that have their own grooming tables at home yeah. and they have a grooming arm. Yeah. They have a grooming helper to put really? the dryer on. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they're pretty set up. So there is that option as well. And you can pick a grooming table up like 100, 150 oh, no. bucks. Yeah, they go away for nothing now, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Um, and if you don't have a little helper, you can have a grooming arm, which I do recommend because you can always put the little grooming loop around, yeah, the around neck their neck. Just to or, them. Yeah, or around underneath them mm-hmm. and back. Like of. a seat belt. Yeah. Across the, across the front like a seat belt. Yeah, yeah. So it just... I find grooming arms really help the dog feel secure Mm -hmm. instead of them trying to put their head down all the time or off balance. Do you find that as well? I do, definitely. I think that the more stable they feel and they're going to relax a lot more while you're grooming them as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So also grooming behaviour starts at home. Mm -hmm. So if you are trying to grow your dog's coat out long it is so important that you do communicate with your groomer about 
what length you want to uh-huh. achieve every month yeah. or six or eight weeks or whatever. Yeah. It might even be every three months if you're amazing at grooming your dog out. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but it's really, really important to really have that good behaviour starting at home mm-hmm. so then when your dog goes to the groomer that your dog's not free, mat yeah. free, that it's well behaved on the grooming yeah. table. All it just becomes of more of a routine for them, doesn't it? And it becomes part of their life when, when they've got yeah. grooming happening at home quite regularly. Yeah. It definitely becomes part of their life and they're a lot more comfortable in the grooming salons. Yeah, definitely. And it becomes not a chore for them mm-hmm. and not a punishment. So I always say to people that don't make the grooming experience be a punishment it Mm -hmm. should just be a day-to-day activity like us having a shower or brushing our teeth yeah brushing our hair yeah yeah exactly (laughs) like especially you know um children don't like at the start but they learn to adjust (laughs) and it is a a daily thing that um needs to happen so uh so going back to the behavior as well so always having your table flat table Mm -hmm. even if you've got like your kitchen bench pop your non-slip mat up there I always say to people make sure it's nice and quiet there's Mm -hmm. not other dogs running around yeah there's not kids screaming yeah less distraction isn't it yeah yeah they can just relax and and enjoy their grooming yeah because you want a relaxed environment and you really want your dog to really relax into it and start enjoying it Mm -hmm. and not feeling anxious because if you start to feel anxious if you've got littleies or another dog or uh, anything yeah um you feel anxious and then your dog picks up on that definitely. straight away <laughs> yeah. yeah and there's been times when I've been grooming and I start to get anxious about the dog I've been yeah. grooming yeah and, and then even they start if to, they're like why is she so yeah anxious? oh and then they're like they yeah. get hesitant as well yeah and then I'll norm- when I feel like that I'll normally swap another groomer mm-hmm. when I had myself on we'll yeah. go can we swap dogs yeah. because I'm not feeling it so <laughs> you really need to take the time and really relax relax with it. yeah um and set the grooming side the grooming I mean, time yeah. aside so allow that extra you know 10 10 15 minutes yeah even if it's five minutes yeah, yeah, yeah allow that time so oh hey Yvonne <laughs> um so if you are running late and you've already set your you know your 20 minutes aside and that is setting up that table and that grooming area for your dog and you're running late don't rush it don't rush it Mm -hmm. just either put your dog aside and do it the next night later yeah yeah because again if you rush that process the dog is definitely going to feel that and Mm -hmm. and you're not going to maximize that grooming time yeah, you're going to rush through it through too. You just yeah. want to quickly, oh, I've got things to do. I need to get on to the next thing. Yeah, so. and I do that. Like I, if I need to bath Dash but I've had a really busy day mm-hmm. at the warehouse, like yeah. I can't then bath him in like half an hour because yeah. it's not fair on him and yeah. it's not fair on me. So I always just – You make to make yeah. time later or yeah. do the next day. Yeah, do it yeah. when I've got time. So yeah. it is really important that you do take that time. And if you do have a bit of an active mm-hmm. dog, mm-hmm. definitely take your dog for a walk. Yeah. I find beforehand. that helps a lot when they're active. Yeah. Just, just mellow them down a little bit. Just yeah. get them calm and... Let them be able to go to the toilet. toilet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and always have, if your dog is um, trained by using treats, yeah. um, have the treats ready. Yep. Have them in a pocket. Don't necessarily leave them on the table and always reward that good behaviour. Yeah. So um, I don't um, reward by treats. Yeah. Um, I, if it's a treat, they get a carrot. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's um, so true. Yeah. So I more reward with um, happy. Yeah. Happiness and energy, I guess. Yeah. And just a good boy, and you know, just reassuring that they're being good when yeah. they are. And- yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, hey, Cassandra. No, there's a few people watching from all over, so that's fantastic. Yeah, Aubrey, fantastic. I hope you're okay with the floods. Yeah, with the floods. Yeah. <laughs> so before we begin brushing our curly-coated dogs, I just wanted to go through why your dog hmm. has knots and yeah. tangles and how that sort of happens because once you understand what is actually happening, it then starts to you start to think about 
of how you're brushing it and yeah. your routine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or how you're so, for the coat, I guess. Yeah. So even though our curly coated dogs are Bichons and Poodles and our Doodles and all those, all those. Yeah. <laughs> They are a, I would say, a non-shedding, mm-hmm. but they, they still shed. Mm-hmm. So they still lose hair. So when we brush them, we will still see hair in the brush because yep. they still need to, their hair needs to go through that shedding cycle. Yeah, the right cycle. The yeah. Growing, the growth cycle, right? Yeah, exactly. So if we don't remove that dead hair in the, in their coat, what actually happens, the hair is more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The cuticles stay open when the hair is dead and it's released from the um, hair shaft. From the hair shaft. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cuticles remain open and then what happens is the cuticles are like little roof mm-hmm. tiles and they lift and then the dead hairs all intertwine yeah. and they more dead hairs intertwine. It just keeps coming in. It keeps building and building, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then what happens is the healthy hair will then start to get caught up in all that. In in the dead hair. Yeah, and in the knot. Shedding hair. In the knots. And then all of a sudden, once there's little knots formed, um, if we don't then try and remove those knots and tangles and that dead hair, um, then mats start to form. Mm -hmm. So this is what is sort of happening. So if... If you have um, and a lot of, I've had so many clients say, you know, they get to spring mm-hmm. coming into summer. So that's this time right yeah. now. So in Australia, <laughs> so we're coming into, oh, hey, Marie, we're coming into our, our, summer. our summer. So our warmer weather in Melbourne. So, um, and I know groomers get a lot of dogs coming in now where people say, oh, no, I've let my dog's coat grow through mm-hmm. the winter to keep them warm mm-hmm. and I'm like no that's technically not right <laughs> because um yes they definitely need their hair and their coat to protect their skin mm-hmm. and their skin is their largest organ but they also need the dead hair removed so the new hair can grow through so it will help regulate their body temperature and when I say this it is so important mm-hmm. so even if we're brushing out our dog's coat and um, he's losing a lot of hair, um, you know, particularly now. Yeah. I find that Dash um, starts to shed at this point. Yeah, time. just yeah. little bits. Yeah. Um, and his, his body is self regulating. Mm-hmm. So during winter, I always say to clients, no, no, definitely get your dog groomed more in the winter yeah, yeah. than in the summer months because in the summer you can just clip your dog down, yeah. go to the beach, have yeah. a good time because you're normally going away, That's right. Yeah. things like that. So I always used to say to my clients, no, 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 bring them in. Let yeah. it, let's just give them a tidy. Yeah, let's tidy. Bath, All you need to do brush. With, they can do just a, a bit of a tidy of the, their hygiene areas around their yeah. eyes. Yeah. Just keep their coat. Right. Definitely. So this is a time like right now <laughs> that we can then start preparing for the summer mm-hmm. and then coming into that winter month. And I always say like March, yeah. April, start preparing that coat. And if you do like a longer coat, um, then start. Start on your grooming process, your brushing processes, and then you can take them into the salons and yeah. get your tidies happening. Definitely. So, um Another, you know, common knots and tangles caused is a dog's wearing jacket. So mm-hmm. my dogs pretty much always wear clothes. <laughs> yeah, clothes so this time. is his new Christmas jumper that he. We're releasing it off yeah. early. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it came in the mail today, so I was going to put a little um, his little shirt and bow tie on that he normally wears, but I thought, no, no, I'll um, sweet dash. She's not. Re- I know he gets in front of the camera, Amy. Amy. Like, and just like, oh, okay, it's time been, to sleep now. Yeah, he's been so busy, like, up until we started recording, uh, started the live, and now he's like, yep, that's enough, Had a, having a sleep now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And as soon as I put him on the floor, he'll be, like, doing circles all excited. <laughs> uh, so jumpers and collars. So if you – And harnesses. Harnesses, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, so if your dog wears jumpers, collars – 
um, harnesses, anything that's going to cause friction on the coat, that's going to cause matting. So what you guys need to do is mm-hmm. remove those. Yeah. Uh, and I always <laughs> remove dashes and definitely brush straight away because yeah. you can see like he's had his coat or this coat on for about an hour yeah, now. Yeah, not long. And it's already like squishing his little um, his little coat. His coat down and that good boy. You can see that there. And that the friction that the jumpers and the harnesses are causing, that's going to that's going to create rubbingness, which then will create the knots. Yeah, and definitely collars. None of my mm-hmm. dogs wear collars, but um, you know, there's lots that do. There's always, yeah, there's always those dogs that come in and they got their, their knots Every, around their collars. Everywhere's fine. <laughs> yeah. And then around their neck is a huge mat. mat. Mm-hmm. So um and people don't even realise until you tell them. Yeah. They're like, oh, I didn't realise. I just, yeah. And And even the dog itself, like behind the ears, um, we'll talk about that also. Behind the ears, under the front legs in the the little armpits. (laughs) Yeah. You know, just them rubbing their own legs to their body that can create friction knots as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I would like to just chat about senior dogs Mm -hmm. as well because as your dog tends to get a little bit older, they do like sleep on one side more they usually they usually favor a side don't they yeah yeah definitely so they'll either sleep more on one side sleep more on the other so this can also cause not so it's the same sort of um you know as wearing a jacket it does cause that little bit of friction in Mm -hmm. the coat so i always recommend with seniors If they're not active or if they've got arthritis or anything like that, I always recommend taking them down to a a shorter length Mm -hmm. and then putting like pajamas on them. Like Fuzz Yard has pajamas and they're like active wear for dogs. Are they? Yeah, like dogs love them. (laughs) (laughs) My dogs live in them. I know Rocky, when we take him nice and short, like um, he's the same, he loves his Jammies. His jammies? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, and you can always do a, still a cute little face and a hairy face, but then take their body that little bit mm. shorter because it is going to help. And sometimes moving their legs and things like that um, with the seniors isn't quite pleasant and can be quite uncomfortable for yeah. them. Yeah. So nice and short can, can sometimes be a better option for the seniors. Hey? Yeah, uh, two of my senior dogs yeah. are like... We like to take the seniors short. Yeah, <laughs> like they're both down to about like five mil, yeah. but they've got nice little faces yeah. and their tail's still fluffy. Yeah. But, you know, then they can wear cute yeah. little pyjamas and, and things. Might, yeah, they're comfortable that way. Yeah. It stops those friction knots from happening yeah, yeah. when they're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Now coming into the warmer months and... Mm-hmm. Australia's got beautiful weather, not yeah. at the moment, but normally. <laughs> yeah. The environmental damage to the dog's coat. So swimming. Mm-hmm. Chlorine. Chlorine. Yeah. <laughs> like when um, my dogs, I always put them in the pool on mm-hmm. hot days and then I'm like, oh, no, now I have yeah, to wash them. Now you them. have to wash them. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a good way um, calling them off and mm-hmm. um, Dash and my mini poo love swimming, so... Yeah. Uh, it is enjoyable enjoyable but you need to, to keep in mind that when dog does swim if it especially if it's at the beach because mm-hmm. salt water it is you know salt water is great but it does dry the skin out and it does dry the coat out and once that coat is dehydrated mm-hmm. it does start to tangle yeah. up and break yeah. and once there's breakage in the coat there's no <laughs> there's no going back you need to um remove it remove it so um i always recommend if you do take your dog to the beach um especially our little curly coated dogs that you go home and you rinse them off um mm-hmm. and definitely shampoo and condition yeah condition condition just to rehydrate that coat because it's going oh hey Hi, Tara, Tara. <laughs> um, because it is going to make that coat more manageable yeah. when you brush it and my dogs are in full coat and yeah. they do go to the beach and uh, I always just make sure I'm hydrating it yeah. afterwards yeah definitely yeah and just keeping that coat really really super clean so even though I haven't um, bathed him just yet no I haven't bathed him for weeks just yeah. because of this mm-hmm. um grooming session yeah but 
um, I normally bath him once a week yeah. on a Friday. He yeah. normally gets his bath. It is his, it yeah, is his bath day. Is yeah, yeah, it is his bath day. He kind of looks around the corner at me. Is she coming? Is she coming? <laughs> so so keeping your dog's coat really, really clean is a, a must. A must. Oh, it helps. It's definitely going to help with um, any buildup of dirt and, and grime and anything that's stuck in the in the In hair. the coat, yeah, definitely. So um, I always say again, condition Mm -hmm. like just makes that coat more manageable but before we bath our dogs it's always important to brush them brush yeah (laughs) so let's start that brushing process and what sort of brush would you recommend for the curly coats so yeah so with dash if you guys that are watching haven't um Mm -hmm. watched our equipment one after this, go and watch it because we talk about all the different slickers. So I won't mm-hmm. go into them too much because I really want to concentrate yeah. on brushing. Yeah. Uh, but I like the, the flexi, flexi slicker. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah, you do love it. It's it's really gentle and it doesn't um, it doesn't really. Um, it's, it's really soft and it moves it is, with the dog's body. They're fantastic, as we spoke about on our other one, they're fantastic for puppies, fantastic for the seniors. Yeah, it's they're... not an aggressive yeah. slicker, whereas yeah. uh, this one, the universal, the long, universal pin. long pin, <laughs> is it's, it's, it's a heavy-duty one. That's yeah, for sure. and for your bigger type yeah. dogs. So, uh, you know, for your standards, your groodles, mm-hmm. those type of curly-coated yeah. dogs. Um, Definitely. But I would always go through. With the slicker first. Yeah, with yeah, the flexi. Rather than going straight for your comb too. So you want to do slicker first. Yeah, you? yeah. And I feel like I'm just remembering yeah. that <laughs> my dogs all lay down when I groom yeah. them. So, yeah. True. yeah. <laughs> so I'm pretty lucky. So I teach my dogs to lay down during that grooming process so this is what he's he's lying down for so (laughs) i'm going to try and get him up but he's going to be really confused about the whole thing because he's like no wait what are we doing i've been told you should never brush a dry dry coat so for daily brushes for a 14 month old poodle should i condition first and then yeah definitely so beverly we will go through that as well see he's like (laughs) he's like that's it i'm going to just (laughs) he's like i'm just gonna lie down he's just gonna lie down so definitely beverly so um brushing a dry coat i would not recommend Mm -hmm. um because you're gonna you're just going to break the coat and break the healthy hair and we don't want the healthy hairs to get caught up with a dead coat like this Mm-hmm. So I do recommend using a coat conditioning spray, and I use a relax yeah. on Dutch on the curly coats. or um, puppy or the puppy if I need more hydration in mm-hmm. the coat. So if I've taken him to the beach or the yeah. park and it's dirty and muddy and things like that, I'll use a puppy because there is more ingredients that are more hydrating. hydrating. Yeah. 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 Uh but the same uh conditioning the poodle coat, is that that's good? Yeah. Yeah. Being a poodle conditioning it every day. Especially because you do have a fourteen month mm-hmm. old puppy. Yeah. So um going through coat change as well yeah. is another reason why you whole... want to... <laughs> Yeah, a whole nother story, isn't it? Yeah, that? it is a whole nother story. Yeah. So I always start by brushing my legs first. Mm-hmm. So always go through each leg. So um, Beverly, I spray with the coat conditioning spray, and move that over there. And then, do we want a close up on this? Do you think, Mark? Do you want to do a maybe up? a little bit. Yeah. And then. Brushing sections at a time. So, so you start right at near the foot. I start right at the foot. Do you start at the foot? Yeah. I think working up all the, works better for me as well. Yeah, I always brush upwards on those little feet. Mm-hmm. And if you do have a dog that is like... A little bit sensitive. Yeah, like and that always like pulls. Mm-hmm. Just do small amounts. Yeah. Don't go really hardcore and push your dog, dog too far. Straight away. Yeah. Dash isn't a fan of his front legs yeah. being brushed. He, I can tell by looking at him. 
He looks the other way like, I can't watch, I can't watch. Good boy, buddy, yeah. And you want to separate that coat. Yeah, definitely separate that coat. And I always like to go in between those. Separate the, two, the toes? The toes. toes. They've got four toes. Yeah, right? the toes. And just making sure that there's no, um, especially no grass seeds this mm -hmm. time of year. Yeah. But um, there's no matting in, in those. Between. Yeah. Come on, buddy, you can do it. In between those little, those little toes. Jennifer McKenzie. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, hey, Jen. <laughs> so I always go both ways. Do you go both ways? Yeah. I go whichever way it needs, really. Yeah. And, I mean, with Dash, oh, I know. Sushi is here watching you. Oh, oh. Sushi, happy birthday, darling. <laughs> <laughs> True. Sushi is Dash's, Dash's sister. sister, lives in Singapore. So going upwards. And then going downwards. Oh, and always starting with your slicker first. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you why in a second. And when we're moving our dog's leg forward, it's really important that we move it the natural movement of yeah. as he's walking. You don't want to take the elbow out to the side. Yeah, it's we don't just, want to lift it yeah, up yeah. higher than their back because... Yeah. That's not natural, is it? No. It causes the dog to want to do this pulling, yeah. pulling away. And we need to really make sure that it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So more natural position is a lot more comfortable. Yeah, let me get this comb. So I'm just using a comb that has fine tooth and a coarse tooth. So when I'm brushing out a dirty coat, I'll always use the teeth that are further yeah. apart. Mm -hmm. So I would never go through with our fine tooth comb. Yeah. One, never, the comb. never on a dirty coat. It just <laughs> yeah. takes too long as well, and yeah. we just want to separate the coat. Yeah, that's right. So once I've gone through with my slicker, yeah. uh, we're just going to go through with our comb and making sure we get right down to the base of our coat. So if I go through the inside of his leg and the comb won't move any further, mm -hmm. we remove the comb. And go back to spray with our coat conditioning spray to add some hydration and then just gently separate those little hairs and go through with our slicker and I've still got even though I'm nursing his leg in mm -hmm. my hand by his elbow yeah it's still not uncomfortable he yeah. thinks it's uncomfortable because he <laughs> normally lies down yeah like what are you doing i don't always lie down to be brother yeah isn't he yeah so we won't go back once we've felt that snag in our coat you want to yeah remove the comb and then go back yeah to your slicker and, and add some spray. then if we're doing the underneath of our dog it's important again not to lift that leg too high up where it is uncomfortable but we need to get underneath the dog yeah, we need to maneuver ourselves around yeah so and that's only fair. Yeah. yeah. It is only fair. So coming right underneath and brush both ways and making sure we get right down to the base of the skin. Good boy, Dash. You're being really good. So going through and I'm snagging a little bit of a knot at the back of his front leg. So removing the comb. And then taking our slicker through. And then that goes through quite nicely. So I'll show you how much hair, dead hair was in. Mm -hmm. Like that's a fair. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot in a dog that doesn't shed hair. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, technically, yeah. like, well, right. yeah, exactly. not like a, you know, a know, Siberian you be, or yeah, things like still, that. You can, it shows that they still do need this yeah. hair to be. And amazing. this hair is quite dull. So mm -hmm. compared to, like, say the hair on his head, um, which is alive and shiny, yeah. uh, this is quite dull. So yeah. dead hair is normally dull because yeah, it's lifeless. It's yeah. lost colour, even though it's white, it's, it's lost still shine, lost its shine. It? Yeah. Good boy. Yeah, oh, you're okay, buddy. 
So let's move through his little back leg. So I like to support their knee in the palm of my hand and always supporting that knee. Mm -hmm. So their knee's not moving around. It's not uncomfortable yeah. from their knee, their stifle into, into their the hip, hip area. Mm -hmm. uh, even their hock yeah. can be a little bit uncomfortable for yeah. them. So I'm just going to spray his coat and then again just supporting that knee in the palm of my hand and then starting at his foot and I'm just doing small small sections of hair and you do you find you begin to know what dogs sort of like to put up with yeah yeah, yeah. Definitely. once they start to become quite regular then they you do get to know them and what they'll enjoy and what parts they don't yeah like yeah so the parts that they don't enjoy I tend to spend a little bit more time on because I'm not I don't yeah. want to rush them yeah um yeah because then by the then when you finish they they then you know they're not as worried about it yeah and while we're supporting that knee, I can oh, move the Suzanne. hair. Hey, Suzanne. It's a better, better late than never. I've been trying to watch your lines oh, all week This now. is true. Okay. This is a good one for you. Yeah. For, for the vision people. Yeah, exactly. So while I'm supporting that knee, I'm letting go of hair mm -hmm. as, as, it, as, as I'm going. grooming. Yeah. yeah. And you can see the separation. And he's a boy, so he... <laughs> Weighs all over his little legs. Yeah, it's a technique that we use. You said line brushing? Line brushing, yeah. yeah, definitely. We have like a lot of videos on, on. our YouTube, mm -hmm. but I always get requests can you do another live? Yeah. Can you do another live? Yeah. Um, because I find that people brush their dogs at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or they get out their brushes. Yeah, and, and have a look. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, you can see that Mel's pulling just this little section at a time from. And spraying at the same time. Okay. Keeping that coat really, really super hydrated. See, even Dash doesn't like to keep still. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Sammy. How are you going? Hey, Sammy. And just small areas. So once I'm I've... free to practice on live too. Oh, we might we might go <laughs> up on that. Yeah, exactly. And then going back through with my comb. So that's pretty not free compared mm. to if I try and put the comb through. You go and it snags straight away. Yeah, like yeah. Look at that. Yeah, like that's pretty. That would be painful to pull through. Yeah, that's pretty it? hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. Then the front. And then when we do the back. She's so cute. Yeah, she's so cute. He is cute. Sometimes you look at your dog and you're like, I can't believe how cute they are. He's actually the cutest thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny at three o'clock. Yeah, three o'clock he likes his little cuddles. Yeah. Good boy. And then just moving up that leg. You notice the hair is starting, you can see that separation in the coat. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys can see on the camera, but his coat is a lot shinier mm -hmm. here than it is here. Yeah. So because we're getting rid of that dead, dull yeah. coat. And adding the um, hydration into it with yeah. the conditioning spray. Yeah. No, you can move that comb. Through. Yeah, it's freely going through. So we can see the separation there as well. Now, Dash does wear a belly band mm -hmm. as well. So this is a good one. Good boy. What are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> he wants to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> he does want to lie down. <laughs> so I just like to support the hair that I'm not brushing mm -hmm. and then move more hair into it as I go as through through his brush. body yeah. and you can see like how long we've we been brushing for like about five minutes yeah. not long not long so the more you practice the better you'll get at it mm -hmm. and the more well behaved your yeah, dog, the will, dog be. will get used to it yeah good boy 
And we and can again, see just, he's yeah. got little knots through his um, is, belly through band his, sits, yeah. through his through flank his area. And I just like to take it nice and easy. And if you feel like the slick is snagging, just move the hair away and find what it's snagging on. Yeah. Mm. And generally you can demat with a slicker. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't realise they, they feel like they need to pull the comb through to get yeah. the out. But the slicker actually works better Pretty for well. You. Yeah. So always a process with the slicker, then the comb yep. to cross-check and just to make sure you've removed all those knots and tangles. Mm -hmm. And the comb also helps straighten the coat as well. Yeah. Because keeping a curl, so that's what does confuse some people, like keeping the curl is out of that coat. Yeah. You you know you're getting all that um, dead yep. hair that needs to come out. That, <laughs> yeah. that needs to come out away. So if yep. it's nice and straight, then you know it's... Yeah. So one thing I just want to add as well is that when I see people grooming their own dogs is that their equipment is full of hair yeah. and they just keep brushing yeah. and they're wondering why the coat feels like it's snagging on the slicker mm -hmm. or the comb. And the reason is, is because all that hair, that dead hair is then getting caught up in that healthy hair. And remember, we spoke about the coat into twining yeah. and tangling. That's what happens. So it's really important that you continue to keep that slicker and that comb hair free. Mm -hmm. Up your pops, buddy. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's an old man now. Yeah. He's like, I'm old now. I'm old. So I'm going to cross check with my comb. And it's a bit snaggy mm -hmm. here. So remove my comb. Just separate the hair a little bit. Pop in the coat conditioning spray and then go back through. And when I feel like I've finished that part of the hair, I'm going to go through with my comb. Just to cross check that edge. Yep. And then move along more body. hair through and then pulling through more hair with my slicker. And then not free. So much nicer. It glides through. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. So I'll just continue this through. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, please feel yeah. free to pop them up. I wonder if there are people grooming at home. They're like, oh, let's get our dogs yeah, out and do some washing. Definitely. Brushing. Like, so every week, mm -hmm. um, definitely if you have that particular breed, yeah, yeah, start grooming, grooming them with, because with us. you'll have um, questions, I'm sure. Yeah, questions will pop up. While you're brushing, so yeah, get those brushes out and start brushing them. So you can see I'm moving over his rib cage and taking Dan's it. saying to... birthday boy, hope he had a great day. McDonald's nuggets. No, he had party pies. <laughs> party pies. Yeah, they all had party pies. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, he loves a party pie. Does he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> he's a little boy. We should have given. Oh no. We had donuts the other day. Yeah. He wanted some. He wanted an early birthday dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then coming through. So, you know, it doesn't take much time at all. And I know that I've been grooming a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, you get faster as you go. But once once you start grooming your dogs at home, you'll work out your routine and what works best and... and definitely like what your dog can sort yeah. of put up with yeah yeah so i'm just going to do his underbelly i keep all my dogs um really Quite short, short. yeah yeah so i'm just going to gently go back and forward underneath there you see that mel's got the leg just straight out in front there there's no there's no lift there good boy and then his little underarm what's a party pie Oh, oh, from New Zealand? A part, what do they call them? Oh, I don't know. They're, They're like little pies. Pastries with meat in them. <laughs> I don't know what you call them. A party pie is like a smaller meat pie. Yeah. I like know mince they... pie? I think maybe they call it beef mince pie. Yeah. Not sure. I'll find out. I know. I we've got, new we've got a New Zealand bakery where I, I live yeah. and they called them something. It was on the local Facebook yeah, It's group. like a beef mince pie. Something. Yeah. 
So when I do his little underarm and underarms, we spoke about underarms mm-hmm. earlier, mm-hmm. that it's important not to stretch it over mm-hmm. their back. So we need to get underneath our little dog. Um, sadly, my Gracie is pretty good, sadly, for her professional, for, pretty good for her professional groomers, but hates me grooming her and always plays up. I try to cheat as I go. It might be, yeah, any tips is, my first tip is professional groomers, they are going to behave for that little bit more because that's what they're there. They've, they've learnt that that's their, yeah. that's their grooming time, as we spoke about yeah. at the start. You know, they know that they're there to have their hair cut or, or be brushed. Because so, by you taking them to the groomer, mm-hmm. it's already communicated to them what's going to yeah. happen once they're in that door, yeah. whether they sort of like it or not. Like yeah. Dash doesn't <laughs> like it. And I don't really, I don't, he doesn't get shown anymore or anything. Yeah, so, so he's like, eh, living, the, living his life. Yeah, he? he's living his best life. So. Yeah. Um, so, and make sure that you are treating at the right time and always, I find... Always finishing the grooming process on a good note, yeah. so something that they enjoy, um, definitely will help. Yeah. Um, so that they start to know, they start to learn that that's the fun, you know, yeah. a fun time. It's not all about, you know, pulling in. The yeah, yeah. There you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah. He's like, okay, let me see. Uh, yeah, most definitely. Um, it is a hard one when you don't have a dog – oh, sorry, that you have a dog that doesn't like to be groomed mm-hmm. and it does make life really hard. But definitely start small. Yeah. So, yes, your dog probably behaves at the groomer, but um, – when you're grooming at home, just start with two minutes a day yeah. or even start by just popping your dog on that bench mm-hmm. where you're going to groom yeah. every time. Yeah. Put the tools there, start to just move, move them around, move the paws, play with their little feet, mm-hmm. um, even clean their eyes. Yeah. Anything that is a part of that grooming process or if your dog gets eardrops, anything like that, that is a place to do it. Yeah, do it on the grooming ta- on your grooming table yeah. or the grooming section where you want to do your grooming session, and then yeah, it will get used to that area. Yeah, I just had. A- oh, sorry, go on. Um, and just definitely retrain. So mm-hmm. retrain that process. So even though your dog's really, really well behaved at the groomer and they're not at home, but you need to retrain that process so your dog understands that that's what's happening yeah. at home as well as well yeah. it can be quite challenging mm-hmm. um but it, your dog eventually starts to notice the layers yeah and groomers work on all different types of dogs all different behaviors so they get used to controlling their like you know anxiety as mel said earlier yeah. so if you if you start to get a bit anxious your dog's going to feel it groomers are used to you know yeah, used to working on that. Yeah, sort of thing. because if so you pick up your dog it. and then you're like, "Oh my god, my dog he's he's going to be so naughty." It. He is. Yeah, they're going to be fine. naughty. Yeah, definitely. So just just make sure that it's as we said earlier, a nice relaxing time and enjoy an an enjoyable time with yeah. your dog. Yeah, yeah. So we had a question about coat conditioning sprays mm-hmm. and detanglers building up into the coat. No, mm-hmm. it's a light conditioner. Yeah. yeah. Co-conditioning sprays are actually the lightest form of conditioning. So Mm -hmm. definitely if you are going to use a co-conditioning spray, use a leave-in co-conditioning spray. Don't put your rinse-off conditioner in In a bottle bottle because because then that will build up on the coat because it's actually designed to be rinsed off. Mm -hmm. And also if you are doing – if you do do that, spray – the coat with the conditioner, a leaving conditioner. No, a con- con- rinse off conditioner oh, yeah. that you've mixed up. Mm-hmm. What can actually happen is when you are spraying the coat, because it's a lot heavier and the ingredients are a lot different, um, it can sit on the skin mm-hmm. and the skin then doesn't have that natural shedding cycle. Yeah. So our dog's skin also needs to shed. Um, I think it's every 22 days or something yeah, yeah. Um, that the dog skin sheds and that also helps then grow new healthy coat, yeah. new healthy skin cells and brushing actually helps remove those dead skin cells. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. So washing and brushing. So they're two different types of conditioning. Yeah, yeah. I could talk for hours about yeah. conditioning, <laughs> dead skin cells, coat. Yeah, but we'll just stick to basic. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yes, the K conditioning spray does not um, does not build up in your coat. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to our dog's little head. Why are you both? Oh, <laughs> oh thanks, Suzanne. Thanks, Suzanne. We've known Suzanne for a very long yeah. time. So we're going to move on to Dash's little face. He doesn't mind it because he knows that I'll hold it up. Like, <laughs> He's like, okay. I know. I, I don't mind this part. Classic. Bishan, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> so I always like to support their face by holding their little chin mm -hmm. hair um, and then sometimes if I'm working on their little face I'll sometimes hold their chin hair but then I'll pop the rest of my hand on the side of on the side so yeah and even when we've done tutorials on trimming dogs faces I'll always support with gently so holding it, she's got a few fingers underneath um that the yeah. chin rests on and then holding yeah them, so and, and then our hand can support the rest of their jaw yeah so by doing this we can really um feel where our dog is going mm -hmm. to move so mm -hmm. if we have a dog that is quite um, nervous and yep. keeps pulling like Dash isn't one of those <laughs> uh, we can feel that so when I am brushing around his little whiskers if it is uncomfortable and he moves his head up then I can quickly let yeah. go or I can remove the, remove the equipment using. because yep. we don't want to damage their eyes or their nose mm -hmm. or their little lips yeah so I'm just going to gently spray around his little whiskers the little eyes when you do that yeah, yeah. dash knows <laughs> <So do> I. <laughs> he knows what i do so um supporting his uh chin yeah and his jaw yeah and then just gently brushing out those little whiskers and i'm only doing small areas so i'm not doing anything yeah um not coming in really aggressive yeah, it's not the whole lot all at once is it because it is quite a sensitive area yeah. and of course it's going to be one of the dirtiest areas because they're eating they're you know they're forever wet around the area from drinking so, yeah um yeah. and you can also um spray your brush as well which is a good idea so spraying your brush and then working it through so if your dog doesn't like um the brush the, the spray yeah, some spray dogs don't like the sound yeah, yeah. yeah it's weird some it dogs is, yeah. don't like that sound or scissors around their their ears and things thank you so much Leah. thank you so much i feel so much more confident when bringing my poo to luna that's fantastic. oh that's good so it's still a bit snaggy there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to use the corner of my slicker. And hold the hair. Yeah, between. and then just work through. Yeah. Through his little mm -hmm. muzzle. Good boy. He's so oh. used to it. There we go. Good boy, darling. There we go. So there's no knots in there. And then I'll just then begin to move on to... The rest of his little head and then by just supporting his ear yes bichons have ears yeah <laughs> they're hidden within all that or hair but that's yeah. what's important to make sure that they, that hair is um yeah nice and brushed nice and brushed out and always remember behind the dog's ears as well yeah uh, i find especially a spaniel being a spaniel person yeah behind the ears it, it's a big one so just Supporting while supporting the dog's head, um, yeah. just bring that ear forward. And... Like cavaliers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Like big <laughs> they get golf big balls. balls behind, yeah. Don't they? So just yeah. bring that ear forward and make sure that you get your brush in there as well. Oh, oh, sorry, buddy. So just working through his little coat there. And it's generally the process through that whole, like his whole mm -hmm. body is just small amounts at a time. And yeah. he does have some knots around his ears as well. So we can see in there. Good and, boy. And I like to just move his ear forward 
and just gently separate the knot. The knot. Mm -hmm. And you'll find as I'm using my slicker, I am keeping the slicker, like I'm not flicking the slicker up like this. Mm -hmm. I am moving it. Away. Yeah. Uh, and downwards. Down. So yeah. it's level mm -hmm. on the dog's skin. So as soon as I start flicking up, yeah. it's going to then pull his skin and he's really going to hate it. So. Yeah. Technique is really, really important. Mm -hmm. I've got a really good video on our YouTube yeah. channel about... Yeah, I was just about to say that. There's a really good one on, on brushing technique. Yeah. So jump on there and, and have a look. I think that's fantastic. And then we can just work through. And it is a process. So you don't have to groom your brush your entire mm -hmm. dog in one night. Yeah. Um, I probably wouldn't. Yeah. I would just do his Bits. head. Yeah. You know. Yeah, keep it to like a, you know. A minimum. Yeah. 15, 20 minutes is probably max. Oh, yeah, definitely. That is a lot mm. of it grooming lot. out time. Yeah. Um, most groomers wouldn't groom out for, for that, long. that long. No. Very true. Good boy. And then just trying to source where this little knot is. And I probably wouldn't use a dematting tool in this because I like him to have a full head and yeah. it might break coat. Yeah. Um, my new BFF standard poodle has lots of matting. Is it true he will feel the heat more if he's clipped short um, to get rid of the matting? Yeah, I would get rid of the matting regardless. Yeah. So at the moment he's probably feeling the heat more because he's matted. It's not breathing. Yeah, so it's it's stuck. It's sitting close to the skin, so it's not letting the air get through, which then um, yeah helps. Uh, what's that word? Um, oh, maintain the dog's temperature. Yeah. Um. So it's yeah. So if it's sitting, so I would remove the matting and then start and again. Then, yeah. So once your dog is clip down mm -hmm. short um you know two to three days time pop them on the grooming table or if because you've got a standard you might have your mat on the floor mm -hmm. uh and then start brushing yeah so the, the dog then understands that yes this is happening so as the coat begins to get longer yeah uh it's easier to brush yeah yeah, yeah, and the so dogs. So he, he's probably is. I mean, once that matting coat, matted coat's removed, he will he will feel feel the heat, but he's probably feeling it more. He'll feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah. Matting um, can also cause bruising yeah. as well. Yeah. Which isn't comfortable for the dog. Yeah. So when I'm brushing his ear, I like to pop my hand behind. Um, underneath, underneath his ear, ear yep. and keep it nice and flat and then just um, yes. brush sections at yeah. a time and just making sure that coat is really separated. I find that the matting on ears is usually towards the edge, edge. of the ear. Yeah. So it's a good idea to flip that ear over and still supporting I did bring my poodle in to because his ears are really long, <laughs> but he's been a bit naughty today. <laughs> um, and then you can see the, you can edge, see of the his... edge of the ear there, can't you? Yeah. So that's it, and it, it is. It's usually that hair that's sitting right on the edge yeah. underneath everything. That so it's good to cross check nodding. both nodding. outside and flip the ear over and do inside mm -hmm. and our cheek area. So then cross-check with our comb and look how nicely that's running through. Mm -hmm. That's good. And before, if we tried the comb, it'd get stuck straight well, on. Well, it would. Yeah. So if we go to the other side, you know, like I, I can't. Yeah, can't even do it. No. Um, and it would just be. And he just like goes, oh, God, don't, no. don't pull on that. Because <laughs> I would never do that, darling. So there are dematting tools, isn't there? There um, is, mm -hmm. but we're not going to go through them today. Yeah. yeah. Um, this because is... with Dash, you wouldn't do it, with, would you? No. Yeah. Uh, I do have a video where I've um, mm -hmm. used it and it just helps separate the coat. Yeah. Yeah. With um, Little Miss Summer. A lot Summer. of the time you can use this like your brush and your comb and yeah. get through it that way. Yeah. So covering his little eyes again and then I'm going to gently groom the top of his skull. 
Oh, Jane Burke. Hey, Jane. Oh, hey, Jane. Hey, we're well. Another great live to help everyone bring their dogs. That's yeah. good. Congratulations on the weekend as well. <laughs> Can't wait to see photos. I'm hanging to see oh, photos. I haven't seen many I know. photos yet. But... I've seen the live late last night. I got yeah, up at a ridiculous time. Live, yeah. yeah. Um, well done, Lindsay. Well done, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. It's been a really um, good weekend of grooming. Yeah. yeah. Lindsay's um, English cocker was beautiful. Congratulations. Daniel the Spaniel. Daniel the Spaniel. That's a sweet name. I love it. <laughs> so, and we can see that we're really separating that coat. And as I go through the longer hair, I really like to take my time mm -hmm. and work through the coat because it is longer, so yeah. we don't want to snap that, yeah. that hair. You want to keep the length. We want to keep that length yeah. through there. Definitely. Good boy. And then underneath his little chin area. I find dogs like this. That underneath? Yeah. yeah. I find it too. Yeah. And then it's like they get it down the chest and they're just like, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> and they're working down. And it kind of then meets up, so we're joining the dots. Yeah. That way you know you covered every inch. Yeah. Boy. So the only place we have left is our little tail. So I'll get him to turn around. Come on, oh, buddy. Gosh, this way. Gosh. Good boy. Good boy. So I find tails get really naughty. Yeah, we might just move it out a little bit just so you can see. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. perfect. So when we brush our tails, our tail actually has a lot of feeling in it. Mm -hmm. So we really need to support this area. And especially with our seniors, it might have sore backs. Yeah. And if you do have a dog that has a sore back, I recommend um cutting the tail yeah, down. yeah the means, hair yeah. not cutting the yeah. tail <laughs> but cutting the hair nice and short with um, one of my old mini poodles yeah. her tail is always is, clipped yeah. short because she's got some back Sword issues back. Yeah. Uh, so she quite likes it <laughs> so <laughs> supporting that tail and again doing sections at a time and Instead of with the body, we've gone up and down with our curly coat. Mm -hmm. With the tail, it is super important that we go with the direction of the coat. As soon as we start going against, it's really going to pull on that skin and really pull up yeah. the tail and it's going to be super uncomfortable for your dog. Yeah, the skin on the tail, like it, it's very sensitive, isn't it? Yeah. And then just sections at a time. It's kind of like parting the hair down the tail yeah. as it goes. Yeah. And then cross-checking with our comb, moving further down. Good boy, buddy. And if you feel like you're not getting, if the slicker is snagging, generally means that there's not enough hydration happening in the coat. So add some more coat conditioning spray and then work it through. With the coat conditioning spray, you can use that on a wet or a dry coat. doesn't necessarily yeah. need to be. So if you've taken your dog to the park mm -hmm. and they've got wet paws and you just want to get out all that grass, that cuttings, like those. Um, yeah, yeah. The clippings went yeah. Off, the, off the grass. Yeah, you can use it on a wet coat as yeah. well or yeah. before you dry. Yeah, I'm a fan of using it before Yeah, dry. yeah. So his tail is all brushed out. He's moving away. Yeah, he's got a beautiful tail. Beautiful tail. So that's basically him groomed out. So he's um oh yeah that's what he does <laughs> yeah. turn around buddy everybody loves you there you go so i'll definitely groom out his other side but mm -hmm. uh, you get the idea yeah. of how how we're going to do it so um another thing i just want to quickly talk about before we go is slicker brushes so mm -hmm. if you have a slicker brush that is all like the pins are like oh, no. having their own little party yeah. and yep. they're not um 
conforming within the joints. slicker. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely get a new slicker because it is going to make your job a lot harder. Yeah, it's going to snag. So it's it's going to snag more often um, yeah. through the coat. And it might not be the coat. It might be the fact that you're slicker. Yeah, and it, it can be super uncomfortable yeah. for your little puppy. Yeah. So it doesn't um, have that normal movement that the slicker brush. Yeah. So yes, if they're yeah. all bent out of shape, it's time for a new it's time one. to get a new slicker, yeah. and that goes for your combs as well. Mm-hmm. So if you're missing pins in your combs, um, get a new comb, mm-hmm. and st- you could still keep your old comb. Yeah. Um, for maybe in the bath or things like that, yep. but get a new comb and keep it nice and clean. Yeah. So our next week's live is it's quite exciting. I mean, it is every, everyone's exciting. been asking for this. this one. I know, <laughs> and so we are um, talking about de shedding, mm-hmm. and we are going to de shed a corgi, the happiest, most smiliest dog <laughs> in the world. I don't know any corgis I that know. don't smile. I know they're amazing. They're so smiley. They're like daisies. They just smile. <laughs> They're they beautiful. Are. So, oh, her name is Daisy. <laughs> so, um, we will have Daisy mm-hmm. the corgi with us 7 p.m. next, next Monday. Monday. So, we will go through um, different techniques on how to de shed um, your dog. Coat. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are going through, um, starting to go through our, de- sh- our shedding, shedding season. So mm-hmm. um, those dogs with uh, double coat will start to um, drop coat mm-hmm. and go through their coat change. Yeah, yeah. Starts grow- they're growing their new coat. Coming yeah, through. yeah. Getting ready to um, for their summer yes. coat. Look amazing for summer. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys really enjoyed tonight's grooming session and I hope it really helped. You guys at home, thank you so much. Pepper is very thankful. Oh, oh so beautiful, good. Pepper. <laughs> um, so definitely if you know somebody that's struggling with grooming their dog at home and brushing, definitely um, share this video. Yeah. So it'll be up to rewatch as well. And we have tons of oh, no. um, brushing. I love it. So tons of um, brushing ones on yeah, our YouTube coat, channel. Yeah, coat care ones on the yeah. YouTube channel. So jump yeah. on there and have a look and... Yeah. If you subscribe to, that's going to give you yep. Notice. Um, notification yep. when we've got our lives going. Perfect. So until next week, um, we will see you then. Yeah, awesome. All right, bye, Thanks, guys. guys. Bye. <laughs>